Welcome to Big Blue Banter. I'm Samantha Money. And I'm Aiden Paris. The UK volleyball team starts their quest for another national championship tonight as a two seed. It was a slow start to the season, but that didn't stop the volleyball cats from getting back to where they always are this time of year, on track to make a run in the tournament. Molly Demro has more on the hottest team on campus. While Memorial Coliseum is still under construction, UK Volleyball has been taking Rupp Arena by storm. Their season may have started off a little rocky, but now they're on a 16-game winning streak, being 16-1 to in the conference. After they shook off the nerves in the beginning of the season, they are now overall 19-7, to and to top that off, they just won the SEC Championship. This would make the seventh year in a row the Wildcats have earned this title. This means the Wildcats will be playing in the first round of the NCAA tournament at home. Head coach Craig Skinner has more. I mean, you love tournament time because there's stories all over the place in the 64 teams. And, you know, hopefully we can generate, you know, one of those stories uh, to write about as we go through this. And, um, you know, we're, our players are certainly competitively mature enough not to get too far ahead of ourselves. And, and we're not either. But, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the most exciting times of any athlete's career is playing college sports, getting a chance to play in the NCAA tournament to, to write, a, write another chapter. Um, but the leadership that she has shown from that point on to now has been uh, super, really impressive. And, and uh, you know, again, her, her career is going to be long because she's going to have a chance to play at a super high level professionally, and, and uh, uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Freshman Brooklyn DeLay was named the SEC Freshman of the Year, while Coach Skinner was named SEC Co-Coach of the Year. Eleanor Bevan, DeLay, Emma Grome, Reagan Rutherford, and Ajani Teeler were named to the All-SEC team. If you want to cheer on the Wildcats, they will play the first round of the NCAA Tournament today against Wofford at 7.30 p.m. in Rupp Arena. That is all for your volleyball update. Thank you, Molly. So, if Kentucky wins tonight against Wofford, who will they take on next? They will go on to the second round of the tournament, where they would play the winner of the James Madison versus Baylor matchup. The final game will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. at Rupp. Back to you, Sam and Aiden. The Kentucky Wildcats men's basketball team had their first big home game in Rupp Tuesday night, and man, did they make a statement. A statement might be underselling just how good the Cats were. They hosted the Miami Hurricanes, and the result was a big win for UK, 95-73. to Freshman Reed Shepard led the Wildcats in scoring with 20 points, as he was 8-13 from the field and 5-9 and from three-point range. Miami was ranked number eight, so this win by double digits is an impressive one for the Cats. Kentucky was ranked number 12, and we'll find out soon if they get to crack the top 10 for the first time this season. Head coach John Calipari had comments on his team's play and ways they can get better moving forward on the year as well as the return of a key big man. And what we wanted to do is keep shortening the game and make baskets. Um, we're still not quite there. We didn't finish off. We got too late in the shot clock. Some of them you want to go and shoot it and rebound it and you kick it out and you go again and now you just use the minute off the clock. They don't have a chance to beat you. We hadn't worked on any of that with Kansas. I was just trying to get them to be a basketball team, past each other. So we really didn't. Now we're beginning to. I'm trying to put guys in situations in these kind of games and see how they play. Um, we, ha we still had some breakdowns, discipline. You can't just do what you want to do. We're a team. There was a game plan, stick with it. And but I'm anxious to get a couple of the bigs back. And I, I mean, I, the people that come in my gym, we got people that have never walked in my gym that are given their opinions of what these big kids are or when or why or this or rumors or, I, I don't get it. I mean, I really don't understand it. Like Aaron, the guys on TV watched it today and yesterday, watched him. So I'm hoping he plays Saturday. But what if he doesn't? Was I lying? No, I just think he will play Saturday. If he doesn't, he'll play the next Saturday. Only time will tell if Bradshaw will play on Saturday when the Wildcats take on UNC Wilmington at home in Rupp Arena. The game is set to tip, tip off at 4 p.m. and will be aired broadcast on SEC Network. 
It's been a hectic past week for UK football, from a potential coaching carousel to players announcing their intention to leave or stay. But Doton keeps us grounded with a preview for the most likely bowl landing spots for the Cats. Kentucky football wrapped up its regular season this past Saturday in a statement 38-31 win over in-state rivals Louisville. A 7-5 record on the season sees the Wildcats qualify for an additional bowl game set to take place towards the end of the month. Experts from ESPN and other publications project Kentucky to hit the road for Charlotte, North Carolina to take on one of three ACC opponents in Duke, Georgia Tech, and Virginia Tech in what will be the program's first ever appearance in Duke's Mayo Bowl. UK is scheduled to, be, to take on one of its, its potential opponents at 7 p.m. on the 27th of December, and the event will air live on ESPN. A bowl game win for Kentucky will mark a fourth season finishing with eight or more wins under head coach Mark Stoops, with all four coming in the last six seasons. That's it for me for the bowl bid toss. Back to you, Aiden and Sam. Kentucky women's hoops has had a rough start to the season, to say the least. After starting the year with two wins, it's been tough sledding. The Cats have lost five straight, with three of those losses coming last week during the Paradise Jam. They didn't come within 20 for the final buzzer in any of those losses. The bad start is obviously a concern going forward, especially being in one of, if not the premier women's basketball conference in the country. A chance to turn the tide starts tonight, as the Cats host Boston College in the ACC-SEC Challenge. The game will be held at Transylvania's Clive M. Beck Center and can be watched on SEC Network at 7 p.m. Coming up on Big Blue Banter, Aiden will join me here at the desk as we make our betting picks for the weekend. We'll be right back. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. It's our final time on air this semester, and we have Aiden and Aaron over at the desk to try and end on some winning picks for the break. That's right. Welcome back to the final episode of Betting Banter. Today I'm here with Aaron Benjamin. Our friend Seth is out sick for today's finality, finale, but it may be a blessing in disguise for us. Over the course of this year's show, Seth went 12 for 15, I went 4 for 15, and Aaron went 2 for 10. Aiden and I will be looking to play a little catch up today with three picks, three picks each for this weekend's slated game. So hopefully, we'll tie us with Seth on the year and win some money. All lines are provided by FanDuel Sportsbooks. So for my three locks, first up, I'm taking the Seahawks to cover plus nine tonight in, at, versus the Cowboys in Dallas. Geno Smith is four and two versus the spread in primetime games and undefeated against the teams not named the Niners. So I like them to cover tonight. Number two is Texans and C.J. Stroud to cover minus three and a half versus the Denver Broncos. The Broncos have won five straight, but the Texans were just one missed field goal away from leading their division this week. I'm taking a bounce back win for D'Amico Ryans and C.J. Stroud. And finally, my third pick is the Lions to cover minus four versus the Saints in New Orleans. The Lions have won seven of their last nine games and lost a shocking, a shocking game to the Packers on Thanksgiving. So I'm taking them to win this one. Aaron, how about you? Yeah, yeah, there's some good games, and I uh, 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 hope they hit for you. My, my first game I'm taking is Washington to cover 9.5 uh, versus Oregon. 
uh, for, uh, in the Pac-12 championship game. Uh, that's just too many points uh, to give Washington, especially being the number three uh, ranked team against uh, a good Oregon team. But in my opinion, that's just too many points. Second, I'm taking the Alabama Crimson Tide, uh, plus six and a half points against Georgia in the SEC championship game. SEC championship game, high stakes. Uh, but uh, Jalen Miller has got uh, Jalen Miller has got uh, ha has got Alabama uh, really going a lot better than the beginning of the of the season. So I think that'll be a close game. I uh, uh, like Alabama plus six and a half. And then uh, third, uh, I'm taking Oklahoma State to cover 14 and a half against Texas. Uh, this is the Big 12 championship game. Uh, Texas has been looking good since uh, Quinn Ewers has been back, but uh, 14 and a half points is uh, a heck of a lot of points to put up in a to. To, to give a team for a championship game. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm taking them. Uh, as always, bet responsibly. That's all for your betting banter. Thank you for tuning in this year with us. Back to you, Sam. In this new age of college football, teams live or die off the transfer portal, and things are already starting to heat up for the Cats. Since last Saturday, Kentucky has lost five players with only more to come. Most of Kentucky's losses have come from guys who just didn't get enough playing time. For example, in Grant Bingham's case, the return of Eli Cox and Marquez Cox for their sixth and seventh years most likely pushed him out the door. Of course, with players leaving, other players entering the portal are a big topic with early scuttlebutt. Kentucky has been linked to a couple major QBs already, but nothing more than rumors at this point. It's the final stages of the football season here in the Bluegrass as Kroger Field becomes the host site of the state of the Bryan Station title games. In the 6A division, Louisville Powerhouse Trinity is set to square off against Lexington's own Bryan Station. Trinity eked out a win in overtime against another Lexington foe in Frederick Douglass last week to get hurt, while Bryan Station won a close battle against Ballard to make it to their first state title game since 1999. These two did meet in week one of this season where Trinity pounced Station in a 35-6 win. Bryan Station's head coach, Philip Hawkins, was quoted saying, I hope they think we are still that same team from week one. We are not that team. The showdown will take place at Kroger Field Saturday at 4 p.m. Up next on Triple B, I give you the rundown of NBA in-seasons tournament, and things are getting rocky in Colorado for Coach Prime. Find out why. We'll be right back. The black truck? Hey. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. For most of us, there are no guarantees, no golden tickets, no easy roads. But at the University of Kentucky, there is a promise to support and inspire you, to reach for what's possible, to lead and create, to heal and discover as we help solve the world's toughest challenges, transforming lives and improving communities. At the University of Kentucky, we promise to make the possible real. Filled with food, family, and of course football. I mean, what's a Thanksgiving without football? There were some exciting matchups this past week, including the Detroit Lions and Green Bay Packers game, which obtained 33.7 million viewers, which record for NFL's Thanksgiving game. With a 29-22 victory lead with QB Jordan Love, the Packers pushed right past the Lions and went straight for the turkey that afternoon. And of course, we can't forget about our own Wildcats and our annual Thanksgiving tradition of keeping the Governor's Cup. The inaugural NBA in-season tournament began earlier this month, and all 30 teams participated in order to make it to the NBA Cup in December 9th on, in Las Vegas. The first round began on November 3rd and concluded on November 28th. 
Teams were randomly drawn into five groups, participating in group play, which will all count toward the overall season record. Now eight teams have advanced to the single elimination game, knockout rounds, and knock quarterfinals. The teams are Lakers, Suns, Kings, and Pelicans for the West, Bucks, Celtics, Pacers, and Knicks holding down the East. The quarterfinals tip off December 5th and 6th. In the beginning of the college football season, there were high expectations for the University of Colorado with their head coach, Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, and quarterback, his son, Shador Sanders. Unfortunately, the high hopes were quickly shot down, ending the season with a 5-7 record. The last game ended in a loss against Utah. Colorado has now, three com has now lost three commitments from players from two rec recruiting classes. Three-star three QB Danny O'Neill running back J Jamerson Walker and four-star QB Antoine Hill have all decommitted this past week. Earlier this month, offensive lineman Tandler, Taylor Chandler and receiver Winston Watkins Jr. also rescinded their commits. With three transfer, with the transfer opponent opening soon, hopefully head coach Sanders can add some prime time talent to his roster. Billionaire Mark Cuban is reportedly selling his majority stake with the Dallas Mavericks to Miriam. Honestly, with family is behind the largest casino empires. Austin is worth an estimated $32.3 billion, making her the fifth richest woman in the world and making, and the owners, the estimated $3.57 billion deal is expected to close by the end of the year. Cuban, however, will keep partial ownership and remain in control of basketball operations. That is all of your Big Blue banter for today and the semester. Thanks so much for joining us along the way. It's been a great journey. Hope everyone has a great winter break and happy holidays from everyone here at Triple B. We're out. <laughs>